Hi friends, Kathy Medeo here, back with another video. This one, a request from one of you on how to build strength for Chaturanga. I'm going to go over five of the top ways that you can use props and ways to modify to progressively build up to that Chaturanga. If you have a tendency to collapse your hips down in Chaturanga when you bend your arms, or perhaps your shoulders roll forward when you bend your arms into that Chaturanga, or maybe you're rolling to the pinky side of the finger and those knuckles are lifting up. And you might be experiencing some wrist or shoulder or low back pain when any of those things happen. So if any of those look or sound like you, then this video is for you. Let's get started. First, let's just cover the alignment of the pose. We usually come into this posture from a plank pose. So I'm in a plank pose here. I want to shift all the way to the tips of my toes so that when I bend my arms, my elbows stack over my wrists. And I'd only bend so far as my shoulders are in alignment with my elbows. Now, if you're having a tendency to collapse your hips down in that transition, might look something like this. What's happening is we're losing the engagement of the core muscles. One of the functions of the core is actually to stabilize your pelvis. So when we're leading with our pelvis in this transition, that's signaling that we've lost that core engagement. And for many people, that can cause some compression in the low back. So you might even feel that in your low back. But another issue with that is that because we're not using those core muscles, we're not getting the most out of this pose, right? One of the purposes of this pose is to build strength in the core and the arms and the shoulder joint, the muscles around the shoulder joint, right? So that's one of the situations that happen. Let's look at what happens when the shoulders dip forward. So I also see this. Again, it's kind of like collapsing down. We lose the, the weight of our head and everything comes down. And that's basically could sit, signal to just a lack of uh, pec strength. That uh, if those pecs aren't strong, we're going to have a tendency to just kind of collapse down there. And then lastly, the issue with coming and lifting the knuckles up and bringing the weight onto the pinky side of the finger is that's potentially causing compression there in the wrist joint. And we have these two bones in our forearm, the, the ulna and the radius, and the ulna wasn't really designed to bear weight. It's a smaller bone, but the radius was, and so that's the why of why you really wanna bring your weight to more of the knuckle side and thumb side of the hand to redistribute the weight. Now, listen, all of that is easier said than done, right? Like if you can't do, a, if you can't do chaturanga, you can't do chaturanga, right? So what I wanna offer you in this video is ways to modify so that you can maintain that healthy alignment and actually start to build up the strength to do a chaturanga and even push back up. So I'm going to go through the five different ways that I would recommend building strength into this pose. We will be using different props. And so what I recommend is finding where you are at in the progression, where you're able to do it, but it is a little bit challenging, and then working with them in sets and repetitions. So meaning doing like eight or 10 chaturanga push-ups, taking a 30 second break, and and then doing two more sets. And I would recommend doing this about three times a week. It won't take you longer than like 10 minutes at a time, tops, right? And this is what I did to build strength in this pose, and this is what I recommend students that come to me wanting to build strength in this pose, and I can tell you for sure you will get results if you can stick to this kind of discipline, and it really won't take up too much of your time. So let's get started. So the first thing we'll do is we'll take anything elevated quite high. So a chair would work, a stool would work, even the wall would work. The problem with the wall is that you can't get the shift forward in order to stack the elbows over the wrist. So I would recommend something like this. And so we'll basically take a plank here in this position. 
and we'll rock to the tips of our toes and begin to bend your arms. So we're taking that chaturanga push-up here. And if you find you lose your form at any point going down, that's your stopping point. Right, so there's nothing injurious or harmful about not bending all the way down. And bending down and holding yourself here and then pushing back up will help you build strength. So this is, you know, your body, your practice, just be wherever you're going to be. And we're focusing on maintaining good form and alignment. So shifting forward, bend your arms, and then push back up. And then we can even make this a little bit more challenging by doing a slow lower count. So we'll count to three, two, one, hold, three, two, one, I'm starting to shake, and then push up. And then you're going down three, two, one, hold, three, two, one, and then push up. Now if that's too much doing those slow lowers, you're just going down, and back up and down and back up. So again, working in about building up to eight to 10 repetitions, three sets about three times a week. The next thing we'll do is we'll take two blocks and we'll use the blocks, and this would also work with a cushion if you don't have two blocks. We'll use the blocks to help, we're going to rest our torso on there. So one of the blocks will go at your sternum, the bony, breastplate in, on, in your chest, and the other one will go around your pubic bone, which is also that bony part below your navel. So we'll be here and here. Again, a cushion or a long pillow would also work, or a bolster. And then we want to find that alignment where the wrists are right underneath the elbows and the arm bones are in line with the elbows as well. And so if your shoulders are kind of just going forward like this, I want you to hug the elbows in and engage the muscles in between your shoulder blades. Those are your rhomboids, and you'll feel your shoulder blades go onto the rib cage. Now start to find Fire up your core muscles. You can bring your navel a little bit into your spine. And we'll take the knees down here. So now we don't have to shift forward because we're already in alignment right now. So from here, what we're going to try to do is lift off of the blocks. And if you can only just like barely push yourself up, that's fine. That's your push up there and you'll come down and you'll go up and down. And then over time, you're building strength to be able to push all the way off the blocks and come back down. And these would be your reps. So again, building up to being able to do eight to 10 of these. Maintaining that alignment, keeping the pelvis, even though our back is at a diagonal shape and the pelvis is a little bit lower, we're still keeping that nice straight line. Okay, let's move on to our third way. Now I've got what's called an infinity strap here. It's a great yoga strap. I'll leave a link in the description box and I have a code for you that you can use. But any exercise band would work here. You just want it shoulders distance apart. You're placing it above your elbow joint. And what we'll do here is it'll serve as a kind of net for our chest. So you're in your plank, your knees are down. Shift your weight forward and bend and see if you can bend the arms all the way into that 90 degree angle. If you can't, you're only lowering down as low as you can. And now push yourself back up. And again, if your movement is this, that's what it is. It's all good. Still building strength. So this is another way. Okay, let's go back to our blocks. Another way you can use your blocks is we will land our shoulders on them. And that's really good, especially if you fell into that group of people that tend to dip their shoulders lower than their elbows because the blocks will stop your shoulders, right? The blocks are about our forearm height. So again, knees down as we're building strength. Shift your weight forward. Elbows are drawing in. See if you can lower and touch. Push back up and up. So that's an example of that. And then finally, once you've built up to this progression, You'll go without any props. We'll still have our knees down until we can do these 
with little effort, right? So taking our plank pose with our knee down, our hips aren't dropping down, they're still, the core is still nice and engaged, pelvis is stable, shift forward, bend and up. Bend and up and bend and up. So that would be that final progression. And then, and then once you can do that and you can do your sets of those, and of course it's going to be challenging, but you can do it without, you know, you can maintain good form. Then you're ready to do your chaturanga push-ups with your knees up. I hope that this video was useful to you. Feel free to let me know in the comments any other tutorials you would like. Remember to like this and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next video.